Hey gang, Dan here, marginallyclever.com. I wanted to show you something that I've learned and it took me years of 3D printing to learn this secret and now I wanna share it with you. It comes from the world of injection molding and it will solve a common problem that uh, I'm sure we've all faced. So here's a bearing and I wanna make this bearing fit into some 3D printed part. If I wanna make this bearing fit onto this part and I make this outside ring the same diameter as this ring, the inside part is usually a little bit loose because the printer will undersize it. And the opposite is true with an outside ring. This outside ring does not fit. You see that part won't go in. Don't even try. I mean, you can press fit it, but then you'll have a super hard time getting it out too. So one possible solution that is the old way is to reprint this each time printing it with a slightly different size until you get a perfect fit and doing the same thing on these and then using that on every print. Well, that's great until you go to share those files with someone else on the internet and then their printer isn't the same as your printer, their little adjustment is slightly different and now your print can't be shared with them because it doesn't turn out the same. So what do you do? Well, thanks to uh, injection molding, they've already figured out the secret. Here's an inside ring and if you look in the shadows, you can see that here and here and here, six times, there's a little bump on the inside edge. This is called a crush rib. So what they do in the mold community is they draft each of these edges. It's actually leaning this way, two degrees. And the inside edge here is leaning this way, two degrees. So the bottom of the ring on the inside here is the same diameter as this ring. The top is slightly bigger and then these ribs these ribs are 0.2 millimeters or 200 microns in size. I just used a circle design and then pulled it up from here. So what that does is the part still fits in, but it's snug and it's not impossible to get in or out, but there's no play. And on this one, if I get in real close here and you hold it in the light, you can see there are the same crush ribs on the outside edge. So this fits in, but again, it's snug, there's no play in there at all. You can still see the rib and the gap a little bit. Remember, on this inside piece, this edge is doing this two degrees. So why do they do this in mold making? Well, it helps to get the finished part out of the mold. It also compensates for any shrinkage that the plastic goes through as it cools. Uh, it means that when you take this part with this design feature and you send it to a friend, you don't have to adjust it and you don't have to remember this funny adjustment number. It's gonna work. And even your drawings that come out of say, Fusion 360 or SolidWorks, they're gonna have the right number on them. Plus, if you ever do decide to go to mold making, you're already set. So there's a lot of advantages to this technique and I hope it really helps you. If it does and you produce something with it, Please tag me, uh, mention me, like, share, and subscribe, all that business so that I can hear about it and reblog your work and celebrate your success. So I hope together like this, we can all uh, achieve more great things. Remember, it's called Crush Ribs. It's uh, from the mold making world. My name is Dan. This has been marginallyclever.com. I will see you next time.